Again, that's Isaiah chapter 33, verse 5 and 6. A little bit of the background before we read that, though. We find our text during the days of the prophet Isaiah. And the king of Judah is facing perilous times. Probably the world, world's foremost empire at the time, Assyria. Assyria is going about conquering, about conquering other kingdoms. kingdoms. They're approaching from the north. north. In fact, they've already, already we see that at this time, the northern, northern kingdom, kingdom of Israel, Israel has already been taken, taken captive. captive. And they are they drawing are closer to uh, Jerusalem. And as, as a result of this, the people of Judah are undecided as to whom they should turn to for assistance, for help. We, we might point, point out that, that some of Judah suggested that they surrender. They just give up. Allow them to be taken captive. Others suggest that Judah seek safety, refuge, and alliance with Egypt. However, However, Isaiah was commissioned, commissioned to warn the people to do neither. His task was to show the people that they needed to realize the key to their salvation from Assyria was to trust in Jehovah God and not in him, whether that be Assyria or even Egypt or themselves. Though all seemed lost, Jehovah would provide the stability that they needed. Now our text, Isaiah 33, verses 5 and 6. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Now, of now, course, this, this wisdom, wisdom and knowledge spoken of is that of the Lord. And, and though, though we are over 2,000 years removed from this passage and these, these events, events, the counsel given to Judah offers the same comfort to us today. Even in troubled times, the Lord offers the stability of your times, of our times. He provides that. First, we must consider that the times we face are indeed unstable. We face many disturbing things throughout our life here on earth. Job chapter 14, verse 1 reads, Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Many of the things that we face are common to all mankind, such as sickness, death, Natural disasters, you think of the area that we live in, hurricanes are a big, big issue, tornadoes in other parts of the country, tsunamis across the world. Some disasters, some issues that we face are, particular, are peculiar to the time in which we live. You think of environmental pollution, you think of economic difficulties, whether that be inflation, Unemployment or anything else related to those things. Diseases such as AIDS, cancer, and even as we've experienced the last couple of years, COVID 19. Who knows if there's not a COVID 20 just around the corner? We don't. And then there's, of course, the threat of nuclear war. Within the last couple of years, we've had a global pandemic. And now, now we have an unofficial, official World War III. You think of the Ukraine, Ukraine and the Russian conflict at this time, specifically regarding our brothers and sisters in Christ in both those countries. Think of how unstable their times are for them at this time. Now, these things affect people differently. These different events, these different Effects can bring about anxiety, fear. They might even bring depression. And even Christians can, can become affected by these things. 
We can allow fear of the world, the issues that we face, disrupt our minds and our outlook towards God and everything around us. After all, Christians are still human. Thus, we can begin murmuring and complaining. We might even become bitter over time and lose our joyfulness. Philippians 4, verse 4. However, there are some that are not bothered at all by such things. They may experience these same things and even to greater extents than others, but they're not devastated. They might experience the same financial hardships, disease, and uncertainty, yet somehow they continue to find joy and stability throughout their lives. You might say they continue to see and find the silver lining in the different situations. Why is there such a difference between these two states? Is there some sort of special strength that these have found that the others have not? Yes, there is. This group, you see, has implemented our text, Isaiah 33, verses 5 and 6. Next, we consider the stability that is indeed provided by Jehovah God. As we read from our text, specifically verse 6, we see the phrase comes through, the stability comes through wisdom and knowledge. This wisdom can and does help us face life. It guides us and protects us from the different pitfalls of life. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 6 and 22. It will provide comfort and confidence during time of turmoil. Again, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 21 through 26, which there reads, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall not be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked, when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. We won't have time to read the following verses, but I would encourage you to do that. Finishing out the chapter, verse 27 through 35. Those are very comforting words, comforting verses there for us to glean. We know that God is willing to provide such wisdom for those who are willing to seek after him. James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, which reads, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally, and upgrade it not. And it shall not be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not man, or let not, let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. A double minded man is unstable on his ways. The stability provided by Jehovah God comes through salvation. Salvation. Offered by the Lord helps us face even death. We can know that we're saved eternally. And by knowing this, we have hope, which further allows us to better face the adversities of life. We can see this same hope and confidence from the life of Paul. Consider 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1. 5 through 9, as well as Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. Consider all the different things that Paul the Apostles dealt with, the persecution that he endured, the physical torture, the beatings, and throughout all those things, he still had comfort due to God and his promises. We see that the key to this ability is fear of the Lord. The proper fear of the Lord is essential. It is required for both knowledge and wisdom. We see this in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, as well as Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. Proper fear of the Lord brings about knowledge and wisdom. It is required in order to receive salvation. 
It is necessary to be accepted by God. Acts chapter 10, verses 31 and 35. Salvation is only offered for those who fear God. Acts chapter 13, verse 26. It is necessary for our spiritual growth. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Why is the fear of the Lord necessary? In addition to these aspects, think of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Having reverence for God and His righteous judgment is a proper motivation for us to obey His commands. Thus, by departing from evil, we're able to properly seek Him and properly serve Him. Proverbs chapter 14, verses 26 and 27 reads, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to, 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 to depart from the snares of death. You see, when we turn to God, the fear of the Lord becomes a source of great blessing. Such wisdom and knowledge, salvation, confidence, refuge is extended to those who have this proper fear. This fear bringing about the things we have discussed prior. Now this evening we have considered, but we have noticed rather that those who lack stability, especially in troubled times, do so because they have a lack of a proper knowledge, wisdom, salvation of the Lord. I saw a common script a while back, and it was, I think, in the Peanuts comic strip, where you had two kids there talking about the rain, and one of them was concerned about the world being destroyed again. It's flooded. We're all going to drown in this water. And then one, one kid asked the other, aren't you afraid? No. God promised he would never destroy the world again in water. God keeps his promises. He has promised to save those who are obedient to him. And he has promised to be a refuge for those who seek after him and obey him and have the proper fear and knowledge that they must. Without that proper fear, we cannot have the proper knowledge, the proper wisdom that we must in order to be pleasing to God. And ultimately, this proper fear leads to these individuals ceasing from their wicked ways. And ultimately turn into God. Because of these things, the Christian may boldly proclaim, The Lord is my help, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Are you a Christian tonight? If not, you don't have these benefits. As an enemy sinner, the times in which we live are unstable. Not only do you not fully understand how to get into this life, but you're not following God's word, it shows us how to live in this life of flesh. So not only are you lacking in knowledge of this life, but what happens when you die? Because eventually you will. Are you prepared to step into eternity? If not, why not get prepared? Believing in the gospel of Christ, building faith in it, repenting of your sins, Confessing Christ before others and ultimately being baptized in the remission of sins. At that point, you become a Christian. You've been added to the church, and you are now prepared for eternity when this life of flesh is over. And no matter what happens tomorrow, you have hope in heaven. You have hope. You have confidence in God to take care of you, which is will. As a child of God, you allow sin back into your life. If this is indeed the case, why not take the next few moments to have that sin removed from your life? Whichever of these needs apply to you, please make it known as we together we stand and see.